Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. We welcome you to the broadcast this morning and we hope that all is well. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And as always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this wonderful and marvelous day. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving weekend and enjoyed your family and gave God thanks for all that he is and all that he does. Amen. Amen. We are now less than... A month away from Christmas. Oh, yeah. And I know everybody is, is excited and getting ready for Christmas. Those that are going through various situations and past remembrance of, of loved ones during the holiday, we, we pray God's peace upon you, that he touches you and, and give you uh, his peace, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And then not only that, we pray that he fills your heart with joy, joy, unspeakable joy. Oh, hallelujah. That, that even though when you remember those that have gone on to be with the Lord, you will remember that the Lord has them and that God also has you. Oh, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come right now thanking you for being God and being God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to spread your word. It's only by your grace, your amazing grace, that we are able to just sit and call out and talk about and speak your word. Thank you for your grace. It's the means of your grace that we are here, that we're able to walk, talk, and have our being in you. And we thank you right now, dear Lord. We ask you right now to bless this technology of Facebook and conference calls. Lord, we thank you for this technology and we pray that it be used to your glory and to your honor. We plead the blood of Jesus over it right now. We plead the blood of Jesus, the Heavenly Father, over everybody on this line and everybody that's going to listen to this recording later. We ask you, Lord, that you touch them, touch their families, touch their communities. We plead your blood over every circumstance and situation in their lives. Anoint someone, the Heavenly Father, with your, 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 your servant attitude, that they might serve this present age, the Heavenly Father, that they might reach out to those that, that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, Lord. It is better for us to, to, to reach out to the down and out than to, to be always trying to reach up to those that are rich, dear Lord. You honor those that, 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 that don't have, Lord, and when we reach out and touch them, you truly bless them. So, so Lord, we just thank you and we just praise you for this, this, this moment that we have together. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O oh God. You are my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Our lesson today, our lesson today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23, going all down to verse 34. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. Um, this lesson is titled Remembering the Covenant, or, or, or you could also say what Jesus uh, did for us. Uh, this is the institution, if you will, of the Lord's Supper, uh, as written by Paul to the church at Corinth. And so let us begin reading. I'm reading out of a New King James Version of the Bible, and it says, For I have received from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this 
in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supping, saying, after supper and saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. Let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks damnation or judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, many sleep. For if we who judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home. Lest you come together for judgment, and the rest I will set in order when I come. Amen, amen. Our key verse is verse 25, verse 25 of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and, and, and it reads, In this same manner, he, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the, is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Oh, hallelujah. And so today, our key concept that we're going to be looking at is it's important to remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. It is important for us to remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. Our keys for kids for this lesson is in three parts. God did not have to sacrifice his only son to pay for our sins, but he did because he loves us. Number two, this gift from God is not something we have earned, but something given by his grace and his grace alone. Number three, we should always praise God for the great blessings that lets us go to heaven and enjoy living with him forever and ever one day. Oh, hallelujah. And so as we break down this lesson today, we're going to look at it from uh, um, our learning facts. Uh, we're going to learn the true meaning of the Lord's Supper. The biblical principle that we're going to lay out in this is to explain Jesus' uh, identification of his body and his blood with the, with the bread and the cup, respectively. And then the daily application that we want to take from this lesson is, is to, to, to create and implement a personal strategy for self-examination during the Lord's Supper. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a wonderful lesson, and we're going to break it down into two parts, the meaning of remembrance and then the implication of the meal. The, the meal of remembrance and the implication of the meal. Uh, this this, this uh, lesson has great background to it because we know that the church at Corinth uh, was a fired up church, but it was also a church that, that had came from a mighty long way. They, they were uh, uh, dealing with a whole bunch of mess in the area of the Corinth of Corinth. And so when, when they accepted Jesus Christ, 
it was hard for them to shake some of this stuff off. And and so this 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 problems. They had many problems and and Paul wrote to them to kind of address all of the problems that they were having. And so here was a problem going on with the Lord's Supper. Many would come to, to the church and, and come together for fellowship and they would eat uh, the food up and then they would also drink and get drunk. And Paul wanted to put this thing in order. They were in disorder and in disarray. And Paul, Paul had heard about this and he wanted to put this thing in order. And so that's, that's the, the context of, of, of this lesson. But, but when, we, when we deal with this, uh, the Lord's Supper, what we call Holy Communion, we, we have to dig a little deeper into to, to what its significance are, is and what others have dealt with over the years. And so turn back with me for just a minute and, and, and go to the 17th verse in chapter 10. The 17th verse in chapter 10. And, and uh, um, I'm, I'm going to go to the 16th verse also. Let's go to the 16th verse of chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians. The cup of blessing which we bless is not the communion of the blood of Christ. And this is a question. The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Okay? For we, though many, are one bread and one body, for we all partake of that one bread. Oh, hallelujah. What, what, what Paul was trying to do here was bring in this concept of communion. Communion. And many people, many of us call the Lord's Supper of communion. And that means to, to have in common and participate, uh, uh, have in common uh, to, to participate and have partnership with. So, so this communion is a commemoration of the fact that, that we are saved and, and that we are coming together and, and, and enjoying uh, the fact that we, we, we are in partnership with other believers and more importantly, in partnership with God. And so, 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 so we are, this is our communion. And so with communion, with communion, with the Lord's Supper, God, God, uh, instituted this through Christ Jesus. The, when 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 Jesus celebrated the Passover, and I'm gonna come back to that. When he celebrated the Passover before his death, he came together with his disciples to have the Passover meal. And so now now when they came together to have this Passover meal, he took the cup and he took the bread. He broke the bread. He thanked. The, uh, God for the bread and said, this is my body. This is my body that has been broken. Then later on, he took the wine and he said, and, and this is, this cup represents that new covenant in my blood. It represents my blood that was shed on the cross. And so we think about the cross and how Jesus was beaten and bruised up on that cross, how he was sacrificed. He became the sacrificial lamb of the Passover. Now, if you remember, if you remember, and I know you do, that 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 when the Passover first was instituted, when it was first put into place, it was at the end of all of the plagues that Moses uh, had 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 uh, uh, spoken would happen to the, the the Egyptians and Pharaoh. God had told Moses that I'm going to bring a plague upon them. He had already did nine plagues. Now this was the 10th plague and it was going to kill all of the firstborn. And, and God told Moses, now look Moses, what I want you to do, I want y'all, everybody in their house, I want them to kill a lamb and then I want you to sprinkle the blood with hyssop over the doorpost so that when the, when the, when the uh, death 
angel comes, it will pass over your house. And they had to eat the, 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 the whole lamb and they had other things that they were eating at that time. And this was the institution of the Passover. And he told them to always do this, to remember how I brought you out of slavery and brought you out of the land of Egypt and, and, and showed you to the promised land. Do that in remembrance of me. And so those who are Jews still celebrate this Passover. Now, we who, who are Christians, we know that Jesus was the Passover lamb. He was the great sacrifice, the once and for all sacrifice for our sins. He, he died for our sins. He took our sins up upon the cross and he died for us. And then God raised him from the dead. And then he's coming back again to take all of us home to be with him in glory. Oh, hallelujah. So now, now that, that I had to add that in because people need to understand uh, where this this Passover came from, where this Lord Supper came from. Now, 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 I want to get into something very, very deep with you, if you will, if you don't mind, because there there are people who take this communion, uh, take this Lord Supper in various different ways. The 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 Catholic Church, the Catholic Church decided to to to. To, to take this communion and they call it, it what we call uh, this transubstantiation. Okay. Now, now what they mean in this is that when we take of this blood, when we take of this bread, we are actually taking the bread or the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. That's called uh, transubstantiation, and, and it's, it's 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 their way of approaching uh, uh, the Lord's Supper. But but many people fought against that, and and in particular Martin Luther fought against it, and that's where we come into this thing called uh, the Protestants. And the Protestants, when they came into this, they said, no, no, this is only symbolic. It is only symbolic, but, but the Lord's presence is there. And so that, that was another take on the Lord's Supper. And then along came the Calvinist. And the Calvinists, when they came, they were like, okay, look, 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 no, no, that, that ain't how we're going to do this. We, we, we're going to say that, that the supper is done so that, 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 that uh, 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 this wine and this bread reminds us of the sacrifice of Christ on the, on the cross. Uh, uh, and, and, and it, you know, and that, that we're not physically feeding on his body, but we're spiritually by faith being nourished and strengthened. So all of these different uh, aspects of the Lord's Supper has came out. And so now uh, uh, I came up, I came up un under the, the Protestant, I came up under under Baptist, a little Lutheran, a little Catholic, a little, <laughs> I came up on the whole house, a little Pentecostal. And, and, and so all of these different viewpoints I have I have I have seen come into to play. But when I look at this text, when I look at this text, I believe Paul was putting this thing in order for all of us that we're doing this in remembrance of the Lord's death, burial, and resurrection. And we know that, yes, the Lord is always present because he told us, he promised where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm going to be in the midst. But we're doing this as, as a commemoration. We're doing this as, 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 a, as a memorial. It's almost like you going to get... Uh, 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 going out of town, say you go to Paris and you, you go and find you an Eiffel Tower trinket uh, uh, and you bring it back home and you put it on your mantle to always remember 
that you went to the Eiffel Tower and that you and that trinket reminds you of that great and glorious trip that you had to Paris. But 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 the Lord's Supper is is that trinket, but it's more than just a trinket. It, it, it is it is a souvenir to remind us all that the Lord did for us and his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This 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 is so wonderful. I, I think about when, when the children of Israel put them rocks together and stacked those rocks up and 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 called that place Ebenezer, a place of help. And they said that anytime somebody asks you why are these rocks in this in uh, uh, stacked up like this, you tell them this this is the place where God helped us. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why we take the communion. We're not making God, Jesus Christ, sacrifice over and over and over again every time we break the bread and, and drink of the cup because his sacrifice on the cross was once and once for all. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all say, boy, you teaching today. Yes, I'm teaching today. I got to break this thing down because we need to understand that that communion, the Lord's Supper, is so important. Important. God graced us. God graced us. And, 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 and his means of grace is identified in the scripture. First, the, the first means of grace is his word. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. His, 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 his next, his next uh, 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 means of grace is for us to pray. And he says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. When you pray, you get saved after you've heard the word of God. And then the third is the sacrament. And the sacraments consist of the baptism and the Lord's Supper. Some call it the ordinances of the church. Baptism is that representation of the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It says, Lord, I believe in you, and I believe in your death, so I'm going to die to my sins. And, you, and then you get buried under the water, and you come up. Out of that water, you said, I didn't bear it all of my sins, past, present, and future. And then I'm coming up out of that water with the newness of life, the resurrected life. I'm a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away and all things have become new. And then the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper. Remembering that death, burial, and resurrection. But not only remembering that, remembering that God says that Jesus is coming back. You remember the angels when he ascended up into heaven? Why are you gazing? Why are you gazing? He that went up is going to come back again. Oh, hallelujah. He's coming back. He's coming back. And I'm like, I'm like, like John over in Revelation. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Come, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, so I, I, I know I took a long time to introduce this lesson, but, but I said I had to get that, those things out before we start just digging into the scripture because I wanted us to, to, to really understand the power behind this Lord's Supper. I wanted us to really understand how people have went through all kind of things about the Lord's Supper. But, but what we're doing in the Lord's Supper is remembering the covenant that he made with us. Not as if we forget. From, from month to month for those who celebrate it once a month. No, we ain't forgot that he saved our lives. We hadn't forgot that he died on the cross for our sins. No, we ain't doing it to remember something we forgot. We're doing it to remember something that we have and to celebrate that. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
So let's look at the scripture. First part, like I said, is the means of remembrance. And, and this is the first uh, verse 23 to 25. For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the, in the same manner, he also took the cup after sup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. It is a time of commemoration. It is a time of, 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 of solemn celebration where you, where you remember what God has done and you commemorate it. You come together. Yes, this is the day of communion. Yes, this is the day of the Lord's Supper. Yes, I want to worship him. I want to praise him and remember all that he has done for us. I remember... And I and this is kind of funny. I remember my youngest daughter. She said, I'm not turning three until I go to Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> she like, if I don't go to Chuck E. Cheese, I'm going to stay. I know I think she was going three to four. She said, I, if I'm going to go to Chuck E. Cheese, I'm going to stay three years old. I don't turn four until I go to Chuck E. Cheese. Because that was her, her way of commemorating and celebrating her birthday. She wouldn't change ages until she went to Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, hallelujah. We, we, we ought to commemorate the Lord's Supper like that three-year-old did, turning four. I, I, I just ain't right unless I worship the Lord in spirit and truth through his communion. But not only is it a time of commemoration. It is a time of contemplation. We have to remember that 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 night, that same night when 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 Jesus first did the Lord's supper, he was betrayed by Judas, and later that night he was betrayed by a kiss. Oh, hallelujah! Mercy, God. And we have to contemplate everything that the Lord went through on that night because he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon his shoulders. By his stripes, we are healed. And so we need to contemplate those things. But not only do we commemorate them and contemplate them, we ought to also know it is a time of identification. Yes. When, when we take of the body and when we take of the blood, when we, when we eat the bread and drink the, 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 the cup of juice or cup of wine, whichever is your tradition, we're doing this to say that we are part of the family. We're communing with those who participate in the great salvation of the Lord and eternal life. It's a part of identifying that I'm part of the, the body of Christ. I, I am his and he is mine. Oh, hallelujah. I am a child of the king. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ. Yes, yes. And he's going, going to bless me exceedingly and abundantly above all that I can ask or think of through the power that's working in me. He that is in me is greater than he that is in this world. I have an identity. I, I'm, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed coming out. That, 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 that's, that's, that's your identification as a child of God. And when we come together for communion, it's like us putting on our bags, 
putting on our suit, like putting on our ID and saying, I am a child of the living God. It's a time of identification. That's what the meal of remembrance is all about. A time of commemoration, a time of contemplation, and a time of identity. Then, he goes and he says, well, this, the next part is the implication of the meal. The implication of the meal. He says in verse 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're proclaiming the Lord's death till he comes. You're making a proclamation. You're making a declaration. It is a time of declaration. You saying, I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I declare that I'm saved, sanctified, holy, and set apart. And I'm set apart, signed, sealed, and delivered until the day he comes back to get me. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that just makes me happy. I can hear the Lord Jesus says, the ones you've given me, God, I have kept. And he, and he says, nobody could snatch them out of my father's hands. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what you're declaring when you take of the Lord's son. That's what you're declaring. That he has saved me for all eternity. And he's coming back to get me. Now, some of us, we, we, we have to transition into eternal life through death. And then there's others, he told us, that when I come back, the dead in Christ going to rise first. But we who are alive, we're going to get caught up in the air with him. Oh, hallelujah. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all get to heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the declaration. But not, not only is it the declaration, it is also a time of expectation. I, I'm sorry, y'all. I... I love I love being down here. I'm like Paul, uh, to live as Christ and to die as gain. I love that God uses me in mighty and, and marvelous ways. I'm, I'm his instrument. I'm his servant. I, I love that. I mean, it's just, it's just so wonderful to think that a God, God would use an old wretch like me. Oh, thanks be to God. But I stand on tiptoe anticipation for that day when I get to heaven, where I can see him face to face. Because right now I see through a glass dimly. But when I see him, I'm going to see him and then I'm going to know everything that God has in store for me for all eternity. And I stand on tiptoe anticipation, expecting blessings over and over because he keep on blessing me. Oh, hallelujah. And finally, the implication of this meal is a time of examination. Now, some folks say, well, you should have read that part first, Nick, because you don't want to end on a bad note. But I'm sorry, this isn't a bad note. You got to examine yourself. We all have to examine ourselves because there's a blessing when we examine ourselves, listen to the text, verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats of the bread or drinks of this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the blood, body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. 
For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. That's the blessing. If we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Oh, yeah. If you've done something and we all have. We all still fall short of the glory of God by sinning. We need to examine ourselves. We need to judge ourselves. Find and then call on the name of the Lord. And when he starts chasing us, he chastens those that he loves. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home. Lest you come together for judgment. And the rest, he says, I will set in order. We have to examine ourselves. We have to, have to let the Lord know that we understand how we've fallen short. That's why he says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, confess your sins. God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And if you say you have not sinned, you a liar and the truth is not in you. And then you even make God a liar. Don't condemn yourself like that. Just confess your sins and believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the power of his love, the power of his forgiveness, the power of his grace and his mercy, his loving kindness. Is, is just awesome. And his mercies are new every morning. Oh, hallelujah. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I hope this lesson has helped you. I can remember um, people in church didn't want to take communion. I said, that's the strangest thing I ever saw in my life. But I, I don't feel worthy. It ain't a matter how you feel worthy that you feel worthy, you are made worthy when you examine yourself. Your, your faith is counted as righteousness and you are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. So go on and take communion. Participate in it. Be partakers with the other believers. Don't pass up a communion. And if while you're getting ready to take them in, you remember all the sins you've done, just say, Lord, please forgive me. You know what I've done wrong. And I'm just asking you to forgive me. And I might partake in this communion, in this commemoration, in this rem remembrance of this new covenant that you established through the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, before celebrating the Lord's Supper, may we examine our heart to, to clear them of unworthy distractions and disrespect for those with us as we remember the new life we have because of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Thank you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. The thought to remember for this lesson, the Lord's Supper connects us with God. That's that vertical. And also connects us with other believers. That's that horizontal. That's what the cross represents and the Lord's Supper does too. Before I end the recording here on Facebook in the conference call, I always like to give those who are listening an opportunity to give your life to Christ. And I simply do it by praying the prayer of salvation. I don't call it the sinner's prayer. I call it the prayer of salvation. Because if you pray this prayer and truly believe it in your heart, you are saved. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried 
and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Facebook, we're getting ready to close this session. Um, but if you want to come on and talk with us and share your thoughts on the lesson or ask any questions, you can call 910-218-0531. 910-218-0531. We're going to go into overtime and talk about how great the Lord's Supper is and remember all that he has done for us. Facebook, be blessed. May God keep you and may God bless you.